Now it's time to look for the final society in our story. Around 300 AD, the trade routes shift away from our shores. Malaya's power slips away. 400 years later, and things are picking up in the Islamic era. We've embraced a new religion. We're creating a new design for city living that will last right up to the 20th century. In the shadow of Dubai's iconic skyline lies the ancient town of Jumeirah. All that's left are the foundation walls of its most important buildings. And one right at the heart of Jumeirah is evidence of a key change in our society. The arrival of Islam. الآثاريين طبعا يستدلون لماذا كان هذا المبنى عبارة عن مسجد وجود المحراب وكذلك اتجاه مكة اتجاه القبلة. المسجد هذا أو المصلى مسجد مهم جدا في ممكن نقول في التاريخ الإسلامي لأن من المساجد القديمة جدا الباقية في منطقة الجزيرة العربية. We were among the first people to adopt Islam outside of its heartlands in around 630 AD. And we soon found ourselves part of a huge Islamic empire. This was a trading superpower, with a huge volume of goods flowing into its capital, Baghdad. Jumeirah became a pivotal hub in the all-important shipping lane through the Gulf. And its harbours must have thronged with traders and boats, much like the nearby Dubai Creek does today. The success of this early Islamic empire was driven not just by its size, but by an openness to trade, encouraged by the teachings of its shared religion. الدين الإسلامي طبعا شجع كثير على قضية التسامح والتجارة والتعارف على الآخرين كما يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا فالتجارة جزء مهم جدا من الحضارة الإسلامية. The people of Jumeirah were growing rich from the fruits of this trade, but they were also creating a new kind of town. A set of specialized buildings that would last into our own modern age. I'm sure that if you took an Emirati citizen from the 1930s back to 8th century AD Jumeirah, he would have felt it completely at home. He would have recognized exactly where he was and would have recognized the Jumeirah as a modern town. The building any time traveller would have found instantly recognizable was this one Jumeirah's souk. You can imagine the shopkeepers sitting out in front of their shops, each shop full up with wares. It might be spices from India, it might be uh, textiles, foodstuffs. It would have been bigger probably than it is now because there would probably have been wooden shops added onto either side, so it would have been quite a lot larger. At the city's heart was an impressive caravanserai, luxury accommodation for traders and their camels. There were also elaborate homes for Jumeirah's rich set. This is the most upmarket of them all. It was probably the palace of Jumeirah's governor or ruler. But what's most interesting is a new feature of home design, a clear dividing line between public and private areas. We can see in the palace that there are in fact two sections. There's a section where the ruler of Jumeirah would have received people into his public chambers. We can see lots of pillars. We can see that there were arches over the doors. And then there's another side of the building completely segregated off, a private area where he presumably lived with his family.
This urban plan of divided private homes, caravanserai, souk and mosque was such a success that it lasted for over a thousand years, right into the 20th century.